Now, what drives the brain? What takes the brain down from beta, which is 21 cycles a second, down to alpha, the, the mystical zone, 10 cycles, which we're all looking for? What causes the brain to go up to 30, 40? And how high can the brain go? Brain frequency is, is at its highest during an epileptic seizure, and the brain is just firing off all over the place. Of course, during an ep epileptic seizure, you can't think at all. When the brain waves get up too high, you cannot think. Now let's get back to that panic situation. You're in a, an auditorium, something like this. Somebody yells fire. Everybody goes into a state of fear, then panic. And when you're in a state of panic, you can't think at all. There are many people who've been crushed to death going out the way they came when they were sitting right next to an exit, clearly marked. Why? Why didn't they go out the exit? Because they couldn't think. They only could remember, this is the way I came in, and that's the way that I'm going out. High brain wave. Fear. What about anger? That's another one that will create higher brain waves. When you're a little bit angry, you stop thinking. But what comes after anger? You get so angry that you forget consequences. And when you forget consequences, because consequences are what keep us where we are at. We don't do things because of the consequence of the action. When you're angry, you forget, you don't, you don't consider consequences, that's when people kill people, when consequences go out the window. That's high brain waves also. So anger will bring the brain waves up, up, up. Now those are negative examples. They're also positive examples because love will do the same thing. When you're madly in love, what happens? Oh, God, what did I do last night? <laughs> you stop thinking. All right, that is the way to use less of your mind. <laughs> now, what drives brain waves? That's the key. Emotions drive brain waves. What's an emotion? You all know what emotions are, but do you? But do you? If I were to ask you what an emotion is, you say, well, hate is an emotion. Well, yeah, but so is love. I want a general definition that will encompass all emotions. What is an emotion? You're about to get a definition. An emotion is any thought, any thought that has like or dislike attached to it. If a thought does not have like or dislike attached to it, it's not a thought. You don't think of it. To think of something, you have to have a degree or more of like or dislike. Ice cream. When I say ice cream, you think about it, you either like it or dislike it. That's an emotion, and that causes a change in your brain waves. Any emotion causes a change in your brain waves. The more you like something, the higher your brain waves. The more you dislike something, the higher your brain went. Why is meditation so valuable? Because it removes stress, many people would say. Well, yes, it does remove stress, but that's not the value of meditation. The value, the true value of meditation, especially in our modern world, the true value of meditation is to enable you to be better at what it is that you do. Well, how in the world can my closing my eyes make me better at what I do? I had a call once to do a private class in Florida for a boat builder. A woman, one of the few women who owned a boat yard. And she wanted her place to be more efficient. Well, they were pretty efficient already. If she's looking to make it more efficient, you know that she was doing pretty much everything right. And when I examined the situation, I spent a few days talking to people. I said, you know, I'm going to make a recommendation. You may or may not go for the recommendation. And she said, well, no, what is it? I recommend, now this is beside the normal breaks, beside lunch. I recommend that you give each person a 15-minute meditation break. Morning, in the afternoon, I guarantee they'll be more efficient and more productive. She said, you're going to take a half an hour out of their day? I said, absolutely. How's that going to make it more productive? I said, do it for a month. 
and then let, call me and let me know. And she did. She had a little room. Well, it was a big room because she had a lot of people there. And the own, no talking in this room, no drinking, no telephone. Well, there were no telephone, no cell phones then anyway. No, just sit and close your eyes and meditate. But what do we think about? Well, when you're, when you're meditating, what are you thinking about? The whole idea of meditation is not to think. When you're thinking, your brain waves go up, don't they? But how can you not think? It's not possible. Disciple goes over to his guru. He says, Master, how do I achieve enlightenment? And the guru said, it's nothing to it. Don't think about monkeys for the next 30 seconds. <laughs> And of course, all he could think about was monkeys. You can't not think about something. Therefore, we bring in what we call the mantra. The mantra Om has a physical significance also. It does have a tendency to change your body waves, your energy waves. We may get into that a little bit later on. Of course, we'll be using that in healing. But a mantra, the way I want you to look at it, the way that I look at it, is simply a concentration of attention. Let's say I want to concentrate my attention. I want to leave the world. Or getting back to the boat builders, because this is what I taught them. The mantra we use is OM. Because now, if I were to do it right now, I would totally relax. I would lose all of you simply by closing my eyes and saying OM. I'm aware of you here, but if I were to do that two or three times, I'd lose my awareness of you. I would be totally involved with OM and what would happen now to my emotions. My emotions would suddenly be neutral. And now I would be able to think, think in a productive manner.